you know, to find out what he's really thinking on this, you need to follow uh, Carly Atchison to see uh, <laughs> to see what, you know, what's the real machinations going on behind here. And of course, like it's it's like naked pandering and electoralism. So she was uh, very busy on Twitter this week. And her post says here, quote, moving the goalposts, end quote, is game the, le- is game the left loves to play. When Governor Sitt signs the executive order for a shir- short-term sub fix to help schools, they whine. When he advocates for 100K salaries to help recruit and retain top teachers, they whine. Because they'd rather him fail than Oklahoma succeed. I love this shit. Like, this, this is like my favorite favorite type of like right-wing grift because it just assumes it, it, it assumes that people are so stupid that like they can't process like basic information um so one i mean we we were on a call yesterday with somebody who is very tied into state employees and you know statewide out of this big executive order to fix the short-term sub problem like 120 or 150 state employees subbed statewide and you know we have like 50,000 teachers and you know thousands of teachers were out sick with COVID and all that so you know 100 state employees really jumped in there and filled the gap of thousands of missing teachers they didn't it didn't do anything Second, um, you know, as we just discussed, this advocates for a $100,000 teacher to help recruit and retain top teachers. Like, yeah, I mean, that sounds fine to just say that. But, like, what is this in practice? What does this look like? Where is this money coming from? All that stuff. Like, it's, it, it isn't real, you know? Like, it's not a real solution. And, like you said, and, and the, the, what, like, we, last week we were attacking teachers, you know, for not – getting COVID and staying in the mines or, you know, wanting to teach certain topics and now being told they can't. What I would go back to is when I was uh, at the teacher's union before the walkout. Yeah. I mean, teacher pay is super important and teachers want to get paid more, but they also want supports. They also want counselors. They also want help in the classroom. Honestly, in some cases more than they want to be paid because like you can pay, a million dollars, but if the job's shitty enough, no one's going to go out and do it. And if you put people in, you know, kind of an unwinnable position. So anyway, I mean, this is, yeah. It's obvious, this proposal. They didn't talk to teachers. They didn't talk to parents. They didn't talk to anyone. They're just, they're just making shit up. I love when Carly Edge gets on Twitter because then I go get on Twitter. <laughs> like, this was probably one of the most... I can't say this in good faith, but I was going to say it was one of the most detached and just, I I responded to this tweet this morning and I said, no, Becky, we want common sense COVID responses and adequate solutions to our failing education system. These are not sustainable options. Like, that's all I have to say. No, Becky, this is, no. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Um... So, I yeah, mean, you know, I mean, her job is to be paid to lie on behalf of our government. So I don't really know what else you're expecting. Yeah, and, and, and that's what it is. I mean, and then she also tweets, uh, what was it? Oh, yeah, this crazy Fox News article. Um, GOP governors crack down on critical race theory. Um, you know, she quotes Governor Stick, God gave kids to parents, not to the government. Parents should be ultimately the ones that are in charge. Um, you know, which again, sounds great to this like sort of weird reactionary. And then she, she crowd anyway, she, then she says the replies on this tweet are insane. People really think kids would be better off in the government's hands than parents. Mind blowing. And my like question is, is like, who? where do they think people have been sending their kids every day for the last like hundred years? Like, like 90% of kids go to public schools. I mean, that was like my take on it is like, you know, we, you know, people have been fine with public schools for a long time. Um, yeah. Say that to the cops when they're arresting your teenager. Exactly. Like, or when we charge juveniles as adults, I mean, it's just wild. Like the, the sort of disconnect. Um, and then what I want to tie it to is is the whole like House Bill 1775, which was the 
uh, we're not going to teach certain topics in schools, Bill. You know, so Carly and Stitt and that group saw a problem, this fake problem of, you know, we're teaching kids that, I don't know, all white people are racist or whatever. I mean, they think we're teaching them. And, and and so they went and passed this law. And do you know how many people have called into the State Department of Ed since September to complain that their kids being taught something that they find unacceptable? Two. And I don't even know who those two were. It was probably like fake two, like, you know, two people that they're like homeschoolers that don't even send their kids to school or something. But like two people out of the entire state of Oklahoma have called in and said, oh my God, my kid's learning something I find unacceptable. So it's like who... What, I mean, what what are they even talking about here? I think it's so hilarious. Like, you are such a hypocrite, bro, to say that, like, oh, we need to not get in the schools and let the, the government needs to stay out the schools. And then, like you just said, y'all are passing things like 1775, Shane Jet introduces legislation to make it illegal to teach children about marriage in any other form except for procreational like between a man and a woman like if you believe that the government should stay out of schools and stay the fuck out of our curriculums like this makes absolutely no sense the, the hypocrisy bro <laughs> i mean and that's the other thing too it's like the the follow-up from there is you know they want to privatize education right ultimately the goal is to put all of this into like vouchers and to make sure that parents have a decision or a choice over where they can send their kids to school. But once you get into a private educational institute, they can literally teach you whatever they want to. Like the standards around the state do not necessarily apply. So I'm not really quite sure of how you're going to legislate to talk about what our kids should be learning in public school and then go right back around and then put all that money into like pick, pick a lane, decide what do you want to do? Do you want to have your state controlled fascist education or do you want to have your state dollars going into vouchers? Like make a decision at this point. Yeah, I mean, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Them trying to put all of the funding into vouchers is their way of getting the fucking fascist education. Like they are going to put this money into schools they want to send their kids to. And, you know, like it. Mm. Yeah, and, and these things are, are, are deeply unpopular, you know, like nobody is clamoring for uh, a voucher uh, education. I mean, there's just so many issues with this. I mean, pu- public dollars going to private schools, they're allowed to discriminate. Um, the, the fact that like the private school infrastructure doesn't even exist to take the overwhelming majority of kids. I mean, it's it's so limited um, on its face. Uh, anyway, there's, there's just so many issues with this. And meanwhile, it just pulls money away from the public schools and often leaves the kids who are struggling the most stuck in these schools that have even less funding. So, I mean, it, it like, it really hurts. It hurts everybody, like, ultimately. It's interesting to know when we talk about the unpopularity of these kind of bills, because there's some stuff going around Twitter today about Senate bill, I believe 1647, which is a voucher bill. And literally right before we got on this call, I saw a Republican uh, house rep saying that he's going to vote against that bill. And like, you know, even the Republicans, some, uh, you know, the, I guess sensible, if we can call them that, the sensible Republicans in the legislature aren't even going for this shit. So what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Be sensible well, if you decide to still stay in the same caucus as these folks? Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I was like, that. I was, I was like, not, really to, not to be that guy, but it's like, if you just decide to caucus with these people, I don't really know what else to tell you. I mean, you, you, you're complacent at this point. Yeah. I mean, as sensible as we're going to get on that side of the, uh, if we can, um, that, it's an oxymoron, a sensible Republican. Like, um, <laughs> this is what it is. Thanks for watching our video. Please give it a like and hit that subscribe button for more content. If you want to engage with us, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram.